Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my March wrap up. I mentioned in my April TBR that I've been having some difficulty concentrating and reading and with like health issues and stuff. So uh, I didn't think I would have too much to talk about in this video, but looking back, I actually read a lot of books and I enjoyed a lot of them. Uh, so I'm just going to get right into it. The first book I finished is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. This is a young adult Beating the Beast retelling. We're following Harper who one night she's out and she witnesses what she thinks to be like a kidnapping or some guy like taking advantage of this girl. So she steps in to try to help and she ends up getting transported to another world with this guy. Um, and since it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, she uh, goes to this world and meets the prince and there is a witch and a curse and monsters and like a beast and like that's there's not much else to say about this because it's being the beast you're telling it's exactly what you think it would be um it looks like there's going to be a sequel uh, i did enjoy this a lot more than i thought i would i ended up giving it a four out of five i just needed it that kind of story at the time something easier to read um and not it, it, it was fun like there was like some romance and I loved Beauty and the Beast growing up that was like my all-time favorite Disney movie it was just nice to like read something fun and light and easy and like young adult that I really like couldn't put down at the time the next book I finished was While You Sleep by Stephanie Merritt uh, <laughs> I ended up giving this one a two out of five and I actually now that I think about it yeah like a two out of five um, I don't remember the main character's name, <laughs> but we follow her as she leaves her husband behind to, um, she's an artist, a painter. She goes to Scotland to kind of like reinvent herself or like to find motivation and I, I don't know why I can't think of the word, but she wants to just like get back into art and after she's had some traumatic experiences, she feels like if she just escaped that this would kind of like help her heal and help her get back to like who she is as a person. So she goes there and it's this very small town and it's got like a history of ghosts and mysteries and stuff like that. So it is like this paranormal story, but there's a lot of sex in it, which I wasn't anticipating. And even though I gave it a two out of five, I still wanted to know what happened. It just, I think the combination of my personal issues and what I normally enjoy in a book is what is making me rate this so low like it just wasn't for me but I could see how other people like it and I requested this as um an e-arc off of NetGalley because they compared it to Daphne du Maurier and I do have to say the writing was very beautiful like I really enjoyed the d descriptions of the scenery and the environment and everything it was really really good um it just like the like I don't think this is a spoiler but like ghost sex is like not my thing I don't know it, it was just weird but it is what it is uh, the next book that I finished is before she knew him by Peter Swanson this is my book of the month club pick for March uh, I really enjoy a couple of his other books most notably the kind worth killing that is an amazing book um, but in this one, we're following a woman and her husband. They move into a house, they meet their new neighbors, and then she realizes that the husband, like the couple that they meet, uh, that possibly he is a killer and has, you know, like killed people in the past and is basically like a serial killer. Um, but these are, this is one of those books where the main narrator is unreliable because of her mental health. Uh, and sometimes that's like wishy-washy for me. Like it's been done so many times. Like whether that's like the main woman is an alcoholic or she's agoraphobic or she's bipolar or depressed or a drug addict, whatever it is, like that's been done a lot. Um, but this one was a lot of fun. I gave it a three out of five, which in my book is still a good book. My ratings, that's still a good book. Um, it's just, it wasn't, it didn't live up to the hype of his other books that I had read. I don't know. The Kind Worth Killing is just like so good that I don't know. But if you are newer to mystery thrillers or like that's your thing and it sounds interesting, I would recommend this. It just wasn't anything. It wasn't just blowing me out of the water at all. The next book I read is Fight or Flight by Samantha Young. This is one of those books that I just randomly 
heard about and picked up because I was like, you know what, I need something like lighthearted and fun and just like that I can just like immerse myself in and get addicted to. So in this we're following a young woman who has just gone back to her hometown. She's attended a funeral of a of a friend that she had, but they were no longer friends. They were but she felt she should be there. So she went to the funeral and she's traveling back home to Boston or trying to. Um and there's a lot of issues with flights and stuff and she ends up meeting this guy who is Scottish and they kind of have like this hate relationship like there are things about each other that the other can't stand um but then it turns into a not friends with benefits but like let's just sleep together while we have the time while we're like stuck overnight at this place and then it turns into like oh well when I'm in town, we'll get together, and it's like a hate-to-love relationship, and there's, I cried, but also, like, <laughs> I don't feel good, so, like, it's easy for me to cry when I don't feel good, um, but it was really fun read, and I really enjoyed it, and it was, like, it's spring, or spring is coming, and sometimes I like reading those types of books in the spring or once the weather starts getting nicer. They just remind me of summer for some reason. But I thought it was really well written. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I yeah, I gave it a four out of five. Um, there were some things, I think there were some things that the guy maybe said or did that I was kind of like, not that it was inappropriate, I don't know. I was just like, eh. And it wasn't like the best book I've ever read, but it was a lot of fun. The next book I finished is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. Uh, this one I ended up giving a five out of five. Uh, it's a mystery, not, I wouldn't say, say thriller. So it's a mystery novel set in Australia. And we have three brothers who at the very beginning of the book, we meet the oldest and the youngest because the middle brother is found dead in the middle of nowhere. These brothers all own like hundreds and hundreds of acres um, and they have like free range cattle basically. Uh, they're like cattle farmers and so th the fact that the brother is out at this location and has passed away and nobody knows how is like super suspicious and doesn't look like he killed himself but why somebody who knows the land and has lived there their whole life and has been a part of like cattle farming their whole life should know not to just be out in the basically the desert like with no provisions or anything so it's really suspicious and once the family comes together after the death of this brother secrets start to become unveiled and uh, about their past and it's it's just one of those books where you're jumping from past and present or being told about the past and learning this family secrets and I love stuff like that and Jane Harper's writing is wonderful like I love her descriptions about the environment and the landscape and things like that like she talks a lot about like the heat and the dryness and all that stuff like it just it just was really it just made it feel real and I really enjoy her writing I have previously read um the Dry by her, which is the first book in a series. I haven't read the second one, but I'm definitely going to. This is a standalone, so it's separate from her previous two books that are part of a series. But yeah, five out of five stars. Really enjoyed this one. The next book I finished is And Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Backman. I think that's how you say it. Um, I have never read anything by him before, but I've wanted to pick up his work for a really long time. And a couple weeks ago, I actually just like went to the library. They were holding one book for me and I just decided to browse. So I grabbed this one and figured, well, if I can read this short little book and I like his writing, then I'll venture into more. So in this book, we're following like this young kid and an older man, basically the grandson and the grandpa. Um, as the grandpa is aging and suffering from like Alzheimer's and it's really sad, but like not sad. It's hard to explain. Like there's a lot of feelings. I surprisingly didn't cry, um, but the writing is great. I really enjoyed it and I'm definitely looking forward to more of his work. I think I'm going to pick up Bear Town next, um, but I don't know. Did I say I gave this a five out of five? There's not much to it. 
but there's a lot to it. it. It packs a punch for how small it is. The next book I finished is My Sister, The Serial Killer by Oinkin Braithwaite. And I'm pretty sure I, I'm pronouncing that right. I heard, I've looked it up. But this one is so good. So I've heard like mixed reviews and I saw a lot of hype for this a while ago. And then it's like, once it came out and more people were reading it, people were kind of like, eh. Um, but, okay, so, we're following, oh, shoot, what's her name? Coride? Coride? Um, and she is a nurse in Nigeria. She lives with her sis her younger sister and her mother, and her father has since passed away. Um, and her younger sister is like the beautiful sister and everyone like dotes on her and she can do nothing wrong. Um, but her sister is a serial killer and, uh, Karide, that's how I'm going to pronounce her name. Karide has to literally clean up after her sister's murder. So we start the book basically, I think, yeah, right off the bat, we start the book with her sister calling her saying she killed her boyfriend in self-defense and she needs help like getting rid of the body so she's cleaning up after her sister she's always taking care of her sister and i think that's kind of like an extreme take on oh everybody dotes on her everybody loves her like she's cleaning up after this girl's murders um so yeah i think that what some people might have a problem with in this book is going in thinking that it's a thriller. Uh, I would, I mean, I guess you, I don't know, does it get, it says fiction for my library, nothing else. But I wouldn't consider this a thriller. It's more like a character study and there's like some dark humor and the writing, it's really hard for me to describe the writing, but it's just blunt. It's straight to the point and it, it's broken up into like these really short chapters. Some are only a page, some are only a couple pages and they're all called like, like this one is called coma. And it's about like, I think this chapter is about one of her, her patients who are in a coma. Like just the writing style is, was, is just me. Like <laughs> this book is me. Um, I, I've seen it around a lot before, like I said, and I just saw it at the library. So I just grabbed it on a whim. Cause I was like, uh, Five out of five. I love this book. And once I come across like a copy somewhere, I, I would like to own this one day and probably reread it. And this author, this is her debut, which is amazing. Um, this author is now like a go-to author for me. Like whatever she puts out, if she keeps putting out like mystery, thriller, dark novels, I am all here for it. And I will be getting them right away. She is amazing. The next book I finished is Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. I have read her other previous books, uh, Behind Closed Doors and The Breakdown. I have to say this one's probably my least favorite. Um, in this we're following a couple, I already can't remember their names, um, Finn and Layla and then, uh, no. We're following a couple, Finn and Ellen. <laughs> 10 years, 15 years earlier, Finn and Layla, who is Ellen's sister are a couple and Layla goes missing. Nobody knows what happens to her. And at the time, Finn is taken into questioning to see like if he killed her or if he did something with her, um, but nothing comes of that. And so here we are 10, 15 years later and Finn and Ellen are now in a relationship and he starts to receive emails from someone who is claiming that Layla is alive and all this stuff and he starts to think that whoever's emailing him is Layla and that she is alive uh and then we go from there so this does jump between the past and the present and what led up to uh him and Layla getting together and the night that she disappeared and then we we're learning about him and Ellen getting together and then we jump back and forth between different points of view as well and it was enjoyable I did want to know what happened I only gave it a three out of five which still good um, but just nothing to write home about. I feel like the reveal was ridiculous and I predicted it very, very early on. But I feel like if you're someone who doesn't read a ton of mysteries, 
then this might be a little more mysterious for you. The next book I finished is The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. Uh, this is a young adult fantasy book. Uh, in this we're following Lexi who lives in this small town and one night a child goes missing and a stranger has come to town. Nobody knows who this stranger is and why he's there. Uh, he stays with a few old women outside, like on the outskirts of the town who are thought to be witches. Um, and once the children start disappearing, they're convinced that it's the new stranger in town because it started happening once he arrived. Um, so children continue to go missing and Lexi is trying to figure out why and who is doing this and she is convinced it's not the stranger um, and she kind of just goes on her own to, not her own, but she's young, a young teenage girl so it's not like, she doesn't have any power in this community. Her uncle is one of the people who are like leading the hunt for this stranger to hunt him down and find him and to find the children. Um, <sighs> i uh, giving this like a three out of five because I did enjoy it. Her writing is wonderful, but the story was kind of, I want to say there was some insta-love and there was some, I just, I don't know. Maybe three is being generous. Like if you're a fan of V.E. Schwab, yeah, read this. But the fact that now, like this is a re-release. So this is her first book she ever wrote years ago. It was out of print, so they re-released it, and now there's a second one coming out. I just, I'm not going to continue, I don't think, or if I do, I'll be getting it from the library. I just, I can't put my finger on what it is about this book that I was just like, no. The writing is great. Her descriptions and talking about the town and the weather and everything, is it's great. Uh, but... I just couldn't get on with the story that well. It, it, is, it does obviously read like a fantasy. It is a fantasy. It reads like a fairy tale. I don't know. It, this could be a victim of my personal issues at the time. Uh, the next book I finally finished. Finally finished. I started this in February. And that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. So... It is a big book. Everyone talks about how big it is, but it's a fantasy book and it's only 800 pages. That is nothing. I mean, I've read all kinds of fantasy books that are, I mean, I've read bigger Stephen King books, but this book, there's a ton of stuff in this book. So we have different, I'll say regions, different regions, west and east. Um, and then we have one side who favors dragons and adores them and works with them and lives with them and has like dragon riders and just like a respect for dragons. Then the other side thinks dragons are evil but they have wyverns and they these two sides they aren't necessarily battling at the time but they have the different beliefs they think the other is wrong um, and then overall in this novel we have like the the nameless one who is like the the bad guy to everyone like everyone's common enemy um and so the nameless one they've spent years and years hoping that he doesn't uh rise again because he's previously been defeated and so each side believes different things will keep him away or what have you so it's kind of like a coming together against a common enemy uh we are following four different points of view or main characters we have ied who is a member of the Priory, so she has special like magical powers. She's a skilled like fighter and kind of like assassin. Um, and she's undercover at um, acting as like a, oh, I can't think of it. She's like working for the queen, but she's there to protect her. She's like undercover. Like the queen doesn't know that she has these powers and this these skills. Then we're following Tane, who is on the other side uh, in the other region, who is a dragon rider. So we're following her as she like goes through um, the training and earns her place in the world as a dragon rider. We're following uh, Nicholas, who is an alchemist, and he's been banished by the queen who Eid is protecting. And we're following him as he's on his own little mission and adventure. And then we're following Loth, who is... Uh, I don't know if dignitary is the right word, 
but he's a lord of a smaller region. Like, okay. I probably lost everybody there because there's a lot of shit. <laughs> um, but what's great about this book is there's maps, which a lot of fantasy books have, but there's also a glossary and a character list. So there, are, I think there are some characters where they're called different things or they have like nicknames or reference names. Um, so I did have to go back in the, into the like character list a few times and double check that I was linking the correct things together. Um, this, okay, this book has gotten a ton of hype and I feel like I love fantasy and this, this is a work of art. This is amazing. Like the amount of thought and work that she put into this is amazing and astounding. And I, although... <laughs> Okay, so it's 800 pages. I think she could have told the story in five or 600 pages. I really do. Um, in the beginning, it was a little hard to get into. Then there was a time when I was really into it. And then there was a time where I had to fight my way through it. And then towards the end, things all started coming together and connecting and I started to enjoy it again. That being said, three out of five. I would recommend it, uh, but I just don't think uh, I, I've i read better fantasy. I've read better paced fantasy. Uh, yeah, I just, I can't, again, like can't really put my finger on it, but it's good. It's, it's, she's very talented. Uh, yeah, just not, not exactly my thing. Um, I did enjoy the strong female characters and the fact that it's a queendom and like there's all these badass women and there is a female female romance which I really liked and was rooting for but yeah I just I'm glad it's done I'm glad I read it it was enjoyable uh, I don't think it's one I'll revisit in the future but yeah oh hopefully nobody gets mad that's how I feel about that book <laughs> but finally the last book that I finished in March. Wait, what's today? Okay, I might finish one more book because I have like two days left in the month, but that would be Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. Uh, I listened to No Thanks for Book podcast and that has um, Katie from Life Between Words and Molly from Molly Reads. They both have booktube channels um, and they talk about book stuff. And they happen to be talking about book to movie adaptations and they mentioned this book and I had read it in grade school, I want to say like sixth grade probably, and I just remember like the movie and everything and the book just being like so sad at the end, and that's what they were talking about too, and I was like, you know what, I want to reread that, so I ordered it right away, reread it, um, I don't remember, like I remembered the story and uh, the overall gist of it, and the ending but I didn't remember like how wonderful the writing was and that's probably not something I would have noticed in sixth grade like whatever um but her writing is amazing this is a great story I gave it a five out of five and if I were to have children um this is a book that I would like totally pass on to them and it was yeah it was just really enjoyable and a nice ending to March I didn't even say what it's about uh, it is about a young girl. It's the late 1800s, I believe, or 1880s or something like that. And uh, she meets this family who can't die. They never age. And it's because they uh, uh, had a drink of this magic spring that's in the woods by her house. Or actually her family owns like the woods. Um, and yeah, so she meets them, spends some time with them. And they explain to her like, look, you don't want this like you think you want this you don't want eternal life um and if everybody were to know about the spring just imagine the chaos and the for lack of a better term overpopulation of the world um so they kind of teach her that lesson and then circumstances happen and the they have to leave town uh of course they can't stay anywhere for too long because they're not aging um, so the one boy is like 80 something years old and he's only like 17 physically. 
So they do have to leave and um, Winnie, the main girl, kind of has to choose, um, do you drink from the spring of eternal life? Uh, do you tell people about it? That kind of thing. So it's really, it's a very sweet book. Um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you're going to pick them up. Discuss whatever in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Of course they're barking.